Okay, so let's close out this section by adding in our post effects. All right, and so if you already know how to do all this stuff, um, you can definitely skip the video. I just want to, you know, show those individuals who don't know how to set this up how to. Okay, so let's uh, take a look. All right, so let's go get some post effects hooked up here. Uh, let's also get the main camera situated. So uh, what I like to do is uh, use the scene view and uh, the new WASD navigation in the scene view, which is cool. I, I go and I get it set up where I really want, you know, the main camera for the, in this case, just kind of for a, you know, rendering shot. I'll select the camera, you know, with the scene view where I want it. And then I'll do a control shift S sorry, control shift F. There we go. And, uh, it'll actually uh, set it at that same position that the scene view camera is at. So a little helpful tip right there. All right. Very cool. So let's uh, deselect all that and let's go set up our post effects. All right. So I'm going to, uh, click on the level group here and do a create empty. So I'll right click, say create empty. I'm going to call this post. All right. Just so I can find it easily. And on this game object, I'm going to add a new component. I'm going to start typing in post. And what we're looking for is the post process volume like so. All right, so this is basically where we're going to control all of the effects that get added to our post effects. Uh, one thing that we need to do in, in our case, because we're only going to have, you know, one set of post effects. I, I don't have a massive level here where, you know, post effects blend in and out of each other. What we need to do is set this to is global. That means this is basically the only post effect that's going to override uh, what the camera sees kind of thing. All right. And so with that, we're all good to go. And then we need to go create a new post uh, process profile. And so easy way to do that, just hit this new button right here. It'll automatically hook it up for you. And it, it goes and saves it next to uh, the actual scene itself. So it puts it into this profiles folder right here because it's basically associated with this scene. All right. And uh, let's go back to our post game object. And we also need to set up a layer for it. So I'm going to go and add a layer. And I'm going to call this post like so. And then we're going to go select our post game object again and then set the layer to post. There we go. All right. So the next thing we need to do to uh, actually see our post effects in the scene view and the uh, game view is go to the main camera here and I'm going to go add component. And this time we want a post process layer on the main camera. All right. So let's actually collapse these guys here so I can, you know, focus on just this. All right. So what I want to do is set the layer that we are going to render. All right. And remember we set it to post. All right. So that way it picks up everything that is in the post layer. There we go. And then I'm going to go set my anti-aliasing mode to temporal anti-aliasing. And I like to add just a little bit of uh, sharpness. You can see here in the game view, you can sharpen things up. It just kind of gives a nice edgy look. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So then we're going to go and select our post game object. And you see, we now have this little button here that says add effect. And so I just kind of roll through and set up my basics. So I get the ambient inclusion going and I set the intensity, something like that. That looks pretty good. All right. And then, and you can obviously go and um, tweak these to your heart's content. Then I'm going to go and add a bloom and we'll just uh, pull that up a little bit till we start to see just a little bit. You don't want too much. It's probably, yeah, that looks pretty good. And you can go play around with all those settings as well. And then I'm going to go and add a color grading. This one's always fun. So I definitely like to keep it on high definition range. And then mode, I'll set to aces. All right. So you'll notice everything gets pretty dark, but then we just compensate uh, with the post exposure. So I come over here, the post exposure, and just kind of brighten it up a little bit. So I get the look that I want. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Nice and cinematic. Uh, let's actually go and turn off our 3D icons just so those guys aren't getting in the way. And, you know, honestly, we can just, whoops, wrong one. There we go. So now, just make, make those guys just all the way hidden. Uh, you can also just turn off the button right here as well. All right, cool. So now let's go put our exposure back up. Something like that was cool. And then uh, let's go to our lift and just kind of tint it with a little bit of color there. Get it looking kind of cool. You don't need a lot. I just play around with these little trackballs here until I get, you know, colors that I like. Yeah, I'm not going to spend too much time on all that. 
All right, and then I'll go and add, let's do um, some motion blur and the default uh, values will be fine for now. And then we'll do our vignette and let's just open that up and go to intensity and just do a little bit. You don't need a ton. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Yeah. So you notice that when you resize the window, it's kind of blurry. Uh, just uh, left click and hold and just kind of draw over the screen and it'll sharpen up. There you go. Yeah, that looks nice and pro. All right, so we got our post effects all hooked up. Hope you guys like that. Let's move on to the next section and start working on some physics.